everyone, I am Annika and welcome to my channel where I share lots of woodworking, DIY projects and the basics. So today we are talking about something that isn't discussed quite as often and that is moisture content in wood and wood movement. This video is sponsored by Wagner Meters who make meters to measure moisture content in wood and we're gonna discuss everything about moisture content in wood, how to measure it, why that's important and how it can affect your projects. So let's dive right into it. Now we all know that this board at one point of time was a living plant and plants need lots and lots of water to survive and the trunk of the plant contains little tiny tubes that absorb water from the roots and take it up to the canopy or to the leaves. And even though the board is all dried up, it's basically like a pack of straws where moisture can go in and out and because of that the board can expand and contract. And that my friends is wood movement. So why do you need to care about wood movement? Well. Over time, with the expansion and contraction, your joints will start to get weak, you will start to see cracks, and pretty much ruin your project and your hard work. So, it is important to understand moisture in wood, and how you can work around it, and how you can protect your hard work. So what that means is when you bring a board into your workshop, it's going to start absorbing or releasing moisture into the atmosphere until it reaches an equilibrium state with its surroundings or a balance with its surroundings. And that really depends on the relative humidity and temperature of the surroundings. And that equilibrium moisture content, also called EMC, is what you want your boards to be at when you start building with them, because that's when they are the most stable. So even though you buy a kiln dried board, you want to let it acclimate to your workshop because the relative humidity and temperature of your workshop is most definitely different from what it was in the store where it was stored for a while. So if you're using two different boards in your project, you want to make sure that they are at a similar moisture level before you start building with them. Uh, same goes with two different species of boards. Now, why is it that you want them to be at similar moisture levels and how is that going to help? Well, if they are at the same moisture level when they start out, they are going to absorb and release moisture very similarly and expand and contract about the same, which can help prevent all the problems that you can have because of that. Now to measure moisture in your boards, you need what is called a moisture meter. And this right here is the Wagner Meters Orion 950. This is the most state of the art accurate moisture meters in the world. This here is a pinless model and we will get into how that works and why that's so awesome. But in order to understand how moisture meters work, let me tell you about pinned moisture meters where essentially you had two pins sticking out of the moisture meter and you would place it onto your board. The pins would send a little tiny electric current and measure the resistance to that current. And water is a conductor and depending on what it would measure, it would do its thing and figure out the amount of moisture in a board. Now there are a few different problems with that. One, it's not exactly accurate because it's only measuring the surface of the board and the moisture content can vary by depth. And two, because of the pins, you have to press them pretty hard, you end up making indents on the boards and you probably don't want to do that because you want to build projects with it. In fact, you want to take a moisture meter with you when you go buy boards so you know what kind of moisture levels they have when you buy them and how much acclimatization they're going to need. And I'm pretty sure a lumber yard will not appreciate you making indents on their boards. How this works is that it's got this pad in the back which basically sends electromagnetic waves into the boards and does its 
measurements and calculations and it gives you the moisture content reading. And because it's sending electromagnetic waves into the board, it can go pretty deep inside the board and measure content at that point. In fact, it can go up to three quarters of an inch deep into the board and give you really accurate readings of the moisture content inside the board. Now to use it, we simply turn it on, wait for the zero, and place it on the board. Now you do want to make sure that there is an air gap under the board so that the bottom surface is not interfering with the electromagnetic waves. Now this is a one and a half inch thick board so you should mostly be fine because they go up to three quarter inches thick but it's even more critical when you are using a three quarter inch board. So this right here is 11.8%, 11.9% um, moisture content and you can move it around you can see it's staying about there it goes to 12 12.5 12.2 uh, this 2x4 has been in my workshop for quite a long time I've used it as a scrap board as you can see for certain other occasions this 2x3 on the other hand I have had in my workshop for probably over a year and when we measured that we get about 11.3 11.8, 11.7, 11.6. So you can see how the moisture content is varying across the board. It is not constant, but it's pretty much a similar number. So what is a good moisture content level for your boards? Now to answer that, you have to know the EMC. Typical EMC in the United States is in the range of 8%, so 7 to 9% in an internal building. But it depends on the relative humidity and the temperature. So in the desert, in the hot arid desert, you can have EMCs as low as 6%. And near the coast, you can have higher EMCs. I am here in Southern California, a couple of miles from the coast, where it's really humid so the EMCs are at around 11% so it really depends on where you're at what's the humidity level what's the temperature like and that is what defines what your EMC will be and what you should look for for your boards to have in terms of moisture content you can find online charts that tell you the EMC for your area but this meter tells you the EMC as well. This right here is the species correction. The different species, different number, have different densities. So you sort of have to correct for that. And there is a reference guide that tells you exactly what your species correction should be. And then if you go ahead here, it tells you the relative humidity, which is 58.6 right now. And then it's also going to tell you the temperature right now, which is 81.2 Fahrenheit. Now, given that the EMC in this workshop today is 10.3%. Now let's get back to measuring this right here. This is a one by eight, which is pretty new to my workshop. I think it's only been probably a few weeks but the moisture content is 10.4%. So it's definitely drier than all these other boards right now. And if you move it around, you have 11.9. Let's put it here, it's 10.8. You can see how it varies across the board. And now let's go to this guy, Walnut. I have had this in my workshop for well over a year. But before we measure the moisture content for walnut, we have to correct for the species. And a Wagner meter provides you with this little handy reference guide. So for black walnut, we need to go to 0.55. So we're gonna go to the species correction and go to 0.55. Okay, and now we can measure the moisture content in this walnut. And I put it down there, 
9.8%. It's perfect, 9.2%, 9.4%. Now, you see what happened? If I put my hand underneath, it changes the moisture content, which is why you need to have an air gap underneath the area where you're measuring the moisture content. So you need to have it a little suspended in the air to be able to get like the real moisture content in the board. So how about we go on a field trip and see what else we can find. Let's go. Next, I wanna show you the board that is kept inside this shed. It's a sealed shed. It gets pretty hot in the summer. So let's go and test out a board in there. So this board right here is a two by four and um, it's been in here for almost a year now. So we're gonna go ahead and test it out. Ooh. So that is 8.2, 8.3%. It varies just a little bit, but you can see that just being in here in a dry, hot place, the board has dried out quite a bit. Now let's go to a lumber yard. This here is prime two by eight and look at that moisture level. These are also prime two by fours and those are 17.4%. This is can dried lumber and it is a lot lower, but look at the variation from board to board. And not just that, look at the variation across different spots on the board. So basically, if you buy these boards for your project, you really want to let them all acclimatize so that they are all at similar moisture levels before you start using them and building your projects. Okay, now let's go test out some red oak. So we are making the species correction for red oak. And real quick, let's check the EMC in the store as well. And that is 11.4%. It's not bad. All right, now let's go ahead and test the red oak. 9.2%, eh, about 9%. We have yellow poplar right here. So let's make the species correction for that and test yellow poplar, 11.8%, 12 12.1%, 12%, 12 12%, so about 12%. So as you see, moisture content varies quite a bit. And especially if you are planning on using construction lumber, you definitely want to use the kiln dried one for building projects. And even then you wanna let it be in your workshop or workspace to let it acclimate. On the other hand, if you are building with softwoods or hardwoods, you do probably want to invest in a moisture meter because it will make a huge difference in how well your projects last. Another important application of moisture meters is in flooring because when you're installing hardwood, you really, really wanna make sure that your hardwood is at equilibrium with the surroundings so that you don't have expansion contraction with time which will lead to creaky floors and ultimately gaps and cracks in the floor which is actually why flooring is left in the room where it's supposed to be installed for a certain length of time before it is installed. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I was able to help you understand the importance of moisture content in lumber and how that affects our projects and what you can do to make sure that your hard work isn't ruined. A quick shout out to Wagner Meters for sponsoring this video. And now here are some other videos that you might enjoy. Bye.